It's me, the vampire. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> hey, it's me. I don't know, I kind of scared myself a little bit there for a split second, but... Hey, here we are again. It's Go Math Chapter 1 Review, Part 2. So let's go ahead and just get started right away here, my friends. And let's see what we have hidden behind the curtain. Okay. We're still doing some view here, and as you can see here, we're moving on. We're looking at number six here, where it says the table here shows the equations Mr. Ward discussed in math class today, which is kind of interesting because I hadn't done that yet, <laughs> not these particular ones. Anyway, if we look at the equations here, one should see almost immediately the pattern. And we talked a lot about patterns and how important patterns are in math. It gives math its kind of its structure and it follows sometimes a very interesting sequence here. If you look here, we have seven times and they're all the same except for we have the power of 10 changing. We have the power, here we have the, 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 the power of 10 at zero to the power of one, two, and three. And as you can see every time, you can see the pattern, there was just one more power of 10 being added. Now, interestingly, the reason why this one is 7, because we're saying that the power of 10 here is really just 1. Uh, 10 raised to the 0 power uh, is, is equal to 1. Um, one would think that it might be 0 because 10 being multiplied by itself by 0, but 0 times, it's just 1. And there's actually an explanation for it, but it's a little bit too confusing to bring into this 5th grade curriculum right now. You'll get this when you're in middle school, but just know that any number raised to the zero power is equal to one. Therefore, this is seven. And so there you can see our pattern right away. Now, the question here says explain the pattern of zeros and in the product when multiplying by powers of 10. And this is pretty, pretty straightforward, I think. If you look at this and you say, well, explain the pattern of zeros in the product when multiplying by a power of 10. Well, you can see that every time we multiply by that power of 10, we actually get that many zeros in the actual product. So we could put that in words. So um, when multiplying, and I'm just going to, when multiplying by a power of 10, the product will contain kind of stop behind the number and I'm going to abbreviate here the number of zeros found in the exponent now I you can write this many different ways and you can also uh, say it many different ways because when you look at this you could say this is the obvious one when any number is multiplied by a power of 10 it's that many powers of 10 that end up in the actual product because 10 times 10 times 10 which is what this is here is the same as 1000 so therefore 7 times 1000 you get 7000 so there's many different ways that you could say that but I think the obvious one is is that when you're multiplying by a power of 10 that number, the, the, the number of times that, that 10 is being multiplied is the number of zeros that you'll see, which are represented as a power of 10. Because remember, this is the ones place, so times 10, that makes it tens place, times 10 makes it in the hundreds place. So that's what we're seeing here. Okay, let's move on. That's right, we got a, we've got that nice little secret code. I guess I could start off by... Bringing this babe down like so. Looks like we have a problem here. I'm going to go ahead and get out my magic pen because I want to do this right now. And by the way, that is that second letter. If you didn't see that, that's the first, that's the second. So whenever you see it do that, it's just a zero. It's a way that I can focus in on something. Maybe I'll use it this time around. Anyway, here we have it is 2,745 feet from Isi's house to her school. Hmm, interesting. Didn't know she lives that close. Isis walks to school each morning and gets a ride home each afternoon. I don't know if this is true. This is kind of a fiction problem, but Isis actually is in it. See, this is how this works. If I wanted to like, highlight her name, look at that. Oh, it didn't do it. 
Come on, come on. Okay, it's not going to work for me. How about the five? There we go. Okay. Now, basically here, let me come back. So, uh, how many feet does EC's walk to school in five days? And here it's not asking us to write an expression. It has a blank, so we just need to know how many feet. So, if this is the number of feet, basically, in uh, one day, then I just need to multiply that by five. So, here is the algorithm that we are going to use. And here we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I know some of you may have learned last year, or I don't know, about putting little columns here. I, I tend not to do this. I tend to write my number as neat as I can. But if this helps you, by all means, let's do it. 25, 5 times 5 is 25. You carry the 2. Remember, we're adding the 2 now onto this product here. So 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22. So we have to put our 2 down and carry our 2 up above. Now we have 5 times 7, which is 35, plus 2 is 37. We put our 7 down, carry the 3, and this is 10, and that makes 13. So I hope it's 13,725 feet. Now something unusual for me, and I will make mistakes from time to time, is to actually talk as I'm doing a math problem, because typically when I solve a math problem, I just solve the problem. But because I'm teaching it, sometimes my brain can't handle doing both. Uh, the concentration and explaining at the same time. But uh, you'll catch me eventually. Anyways, his next problem says Isai, yeah, hey, ECs, now we have Isai, saves $15 of his allowance each week. Oh my goodness, that boy, he's making some good money there, I would have to say. Uh, it says that complete the table to show the total amount Isai saves. The total amount, keywords, okay? And we're going to finish this table. $15 of each week, and it tells us the number of weeks. All right, so it's pretty straightforward, like what we did in the last problem. Well, if we have $15, 15 times 3, um, well, that's $45. And the reason why I like doing problems like this is because this particular one is just like the clock. You know, if you think of the clock, the, the, I should say that uh, not, not your digital or your cell phone, but an actual real clock, analog, um, this here is like one quarter of the clock, and here's another quarter, and here's yet a third quarter. And so every quarter has 15 minutes in it. And the clock's a handy little tool. Let me tell you, I've used it on tests many, many times. Because with a clock, you can do many. You, there, we just did quarters. But you can actually do sixths on a clock. You can do uh, thirds. And anyway, it kind of helps you figure out the math problem because 15, 30, 45 minutes, there you go. 5 times 15, that happens to be 75. We can do the math behind it so you can see. 15 times 5, there's 25. I guess I should show I'm multiplying here. Carry the 2. 5 times 1. Okay, 5 plus 2. 75. Now we have 8, 15. I'm not sure which one that's going to go over 100, I would imagine. So I'm going to multiply that. That's 40. Carry the 4. We have 8, 120. So notice that I'm putting that money sign in front because it's amount, it's money. So numbers don't have any meaning unless you have a unit of measure that accompanies it, basically um, indicating what it's for. All right, let's keep on moving. I might have to, I forgot to start my timer, so I don't know how we're doing on time here, but I will keep up with that. Let me see. Let's do this. Perfect. All right. Now, here we go. Juan. Okay. Ooh. So part of my thing there. Juan followed these steps to evaluate the expression. If you haven't noticed, this is coming straight off of like your workbook, okay? So we have here, it says that we have 12 plus, and then we have the difference of 28 and 4. Uh, divided by 6 on here. And it basically says that Juan followed these steps to evaluate the expression. Okay, cool. Now, it says Dorian looks at Juan's work, hmm, and he and says he made a mistake. Hmm. All right. All right, so Dorian thinks Juan made a mistake, huh? Okay. He says he should have divided by 6 before he added. Well, let me, let's take a look here. We have 28 minus 4. That's equal to 24. So that's going to leave the 24 here. So he has a 24 plus the 12, okay, which equals 36 if you add those two together. And then he's taking this 36 divided by 6 equals 6. Seems like it's okay, but we have to make a decision here. 
which student is correct? Well, I think Dory makes a good point here because if we recall, PEMDAS, as we have learned, uh, tells us that we always multiply and divide first before we add and subtract. So I think that Dory makes a really good point here. So if we actually have that r problem and we were to write it out, you can see that, yes, we would have done what was in parentheses first, definitely, and that would have given us 24. But then we would have had 12 plus 24 divided by 6. Now we're sitting here, it's like this is where PEMDAS is so important because if we add these first, before we divide, we may get a different answer. In fact, if you look, we will, because we should be dividing before we add, according to PEMDAS. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and divide then first before I do that. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Let me come over here. You know what those letters mean. Make sure you get that pencil and paper out. So uh, I won't be so kind, but I'm friendly. I'm helping you right now. So 24 divided by uh, 6 is 4, and then of course I'm going to put the 12 in front. I'm getting that from here, 24 divided by 6. Therefore, my answer should be 16. So Dorian, yeah, game on, my friend. So moving down, now it says, oh, I already did this actually. Oops, I did part B before it came. It says evaluate the expression, and evaluate means after we've basically just come up with what that value is. And that value of that expression would have a value of 16. Okay, we actually kind of already did that. Okay, moving on. What do we have here? Ooh, looks like Adrian. Oh my goodness, oh, look at these problems. Adrian buys eight stickers for $3 each. He also buys five sticker albums. Okay, each album costs twice as much as each sticker. Okay, Adrian has a coupon that gives him $3 off the sticker albums, which numerical expression shows how much he spent. My goodness, just looking at that, is that making your, your mind kind of spin a little bit? Whoa, we've got a lot of information here. So when problems get this complex, I think the easiest thing to do is to just immediately look at it and say, okay, what? Let's break this in pieces. Adrian buys eight stickers for $3 each, okay? That's how much he bought, okay? He also buys five sticker albums, okay? He's only got eight stickers, but he's buying some sticker albums too. Now, it says each album costs twice as much as each sticker. Well, the, this is kind of important here because when I look back, it says, well, it says right here that each sticker is $3, okay? And each album that he's, you know, going to buy is twice as much as each sticker, so that much we do know. He buys eight sticker albums, and each album is twice as much. And when we say twice as much, it sounds like we're multiplying. Something times two. Well, if each sticker is $3, that's an indication right there that it should be three times two. At some point, we are going to need to do that. And then, of course, it says he bought five of those sticker albums. Okay, so we could have the three times two, right? And then maybe have that plus five in there or something. Let's see what we have here for... Um, and then it also says Adrian has a coupon that gives him $3 off the sticker album. So after he's purchased all of that, the five sticker albums, he's going to get $3 off. So we're going to have to have a minus 3. Well, you can see already by just looking at that, subtracting 3, I only see two answers that have the subtract 3 in there. So let's take a look. Uh, first one says 8 times 3. What would the 8 represent? Hmm, number of stickers he buys at $3. We're multiplying. Okay, and we're going to be adding, we're not going to be multiplying here because we're taking this amount and he bought something else. So whenever we kind of use the end in this context, we're like, we're like adding. Okay, now suddenly we have, here's the 3 times 2. Hmm, that's what we had written up here earlier. 3, uh, the 3 represents basically um, the amount of, uh, each, amount, each sticker cost because the album is twice as much. So if we had five sticker albums, uh, basically, five, let me check on the time here. What are we doing on time? Okay, we're good on time. I had to just check real quick here. So now as we look here, uh, come back to the problem. Yeah, there's just a lot of numbers in here. But basically, um, one thing that we can say is at some point that coupon is going to give him the $3 off. And there you see the minus 3. At some point. 
you have to get to that subtraction. So that's three, three less. We don't have that here. We have two less here. They're adding three here. So we're looking at this one and this one. Now this looks good because we have three stickers and then it's twice as much. However, if you look at this problem, what we have here is eight stickers at three dollars each, okay, plus. And then notice here we have five sticker albums because that's what we have. We have five sticker albums and we multiplied it by six. Now that's because each sticker album it says here is twice as much of each sticker. So if you think of the the, the album itself is actually six dollars, okay? Because it's three and then twice as much, which is two, which is six dollars. And now we have our six dollars times the five sticker albums and now we're going to subtract it by three. Now I could show a model to show you how to do this as well and it might help you. This is a pretty challenging problem, I will say. And then you subtract the three dollars off. Some of these look really, really close. This look really, really close, but the reason why this can't be it is because each sticker album is not three dollars, it's five dollars. I'm sorry, this, it's not three dollars, it's actually six dollars. There's five and then we're going to multiply that by six. Um, so that cannot be the correct answer. So C should be the correct answer on that one there. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, uh, this video. Thank you very much for your undivided attention. I know all of you are really paying attention. I could just see you through the screen. I knew it. And as a vampire, I have this special, special skills. Anyway, see you next time, my friends.